Reading scholars, Wormwood here. Ah, love. Love hurts. This is why the Chinese word for love and the Swedish word for ouch are one and the same. I. That's how, that's how comparative linguistics work, right? The Chinese character for love, as seen here, is one of the first characters a Chinese learner uh, learns, and perhaps also the first time said student is forced to pick a side in the decades-old blood feud that will henceforth define their whole existence. That's right, we're talking about traditional versus simplified characters. And you might expect me, a regressive Luddite, to side with the traditionalists on this one, because hey, more strokes equal more good. But as it turns out, they're both wrong. To see why, let's do some etymology. The oldest recorded use of this character is actually not that old, relatively speaking, only appearing on bronze inscriptions from the spring and autumn period. Apparently, the Shang dynasty emperors never had to ask their ancestors for advice on how to get the jade-like beauty next door to go on a date with them. Shang dynasty? More like Sigma Grind dynasty, am I right, fellas? Now, what we see here is quite different from the modern character. At the top is the character Qi, which we encountered in my video on Qi. And at the bottom we have Xin Heart. This is also the character that appears in Shuo Wen Jiezi. So for once, I shan't be giving Mr. Xi a hard time. Or will I? In my video on Qi, I described the Qi glyph which used Di over fire, Huo, as belching fire Qi, because Di can be seen as both a semantic and a phonetic component. That is, it gives meaning to the character beyond just telling you how it's supposed to be read. Today's hot take is I think that the same holds true for the character I. The Shuven entry under Ji reads specifically Yin Shi Ni Qi Bu De Xi Yue Ji, or in English, eating and drinking causing Qi to rise up or going backwards, making it hard to breathe. This is called Ji. This is a very roundabout way to describe a belch or something like a hiccup, but I wanted to draw your attention to the implicit feeling of discomfort here, something which I'm sure anyone who's ever had a crush on someone can relate to. I believe whoever invented this character wanted to paint a vivid yet simple picture of the feeling of love and passion, which would instantly be recognizable. And in fact, it was this sensation which caused many uptight Confucians to label romantic love as a form of mental illness. But that's a story for another time. We've now established the origins of the character love, but this early glyph looks nothing like the modern character, so how did we, to quote Private Baldrick, get from one state of affairs to the other? Well, the ancient glyph remained in use throughout the spring and autumn period. Of course, the Chu still had to be a little extra and use a modified form using the homophone Ji as a phonetic. Never change, Chu. Never change. On the opposite end of the Warring States map, however, in Qin, we see another development. The missing link, so to speak, between the ancient and modern character can be seen in the excavated text from the Qin period, where a foot radical has been added to the bottom of I, resulting in this shape. Because apparently, not only was the first emperor an insane megalomaniac, but he was also a foot fetishist. <laughs> The Han Dynasty scribes, while otherwise wasting no opportunity to dunk on the previous dynasty, apparently shared the first emperor's love of feet because they continued to use the modified character. Mr. Xu made a valiant attempt to end the madness, which is why Shuo Wen Jiezi lists the original character as the correct one, and glosses the modern character as meaning to walk. Funnily enough, I is not listed as having to do with walking anywhere else, at least that I could find, so either this was an obscure Han Dynasty reading that is lost to time, or Mr. Xu was so desperate to cover up for this foot fetish nonsense that he just made a meaning up on his own. The now standard character turned out to be a bit cumbersome to write in the clerical style, however, and so the shape was streamlined over time until the character I began to resemble Shou to receive, with a heart radical in the middle. Which gave rise to the popular explanation that the character love means to receive or accept someone's feelings, which is honestly a really cute piece of folk etymology. What we think of as the modern simplified version can be traced back to the Song Dynasty, with several other alternate versions being in circulation at the time, including this one, where the writer seems to have confused the heart radical with the ox radical? Yeah, no, 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 I get it. I, I love me a good beef barbecue myself. I suppose we can cut those tattoo artists making botched Chinese character tats some slack, because honestly, 
ancient Chinese scribes couldn't be bothered to write the damn thing properly either. In conclusion, the traditional character for love is a hot mess directed by Tarantino, and the 1947 Simplification Committee dropped the ball and brought dishonor upon their families by being Chinese yet failing at basic math when they didn't revive the original character. Thank you all so much for watching. I've decided to cut out the calligraphy writing tip segment of this and future etymology videos, and I'll be making a dedicated series on the topic instead. You know, eventually. On that note, I'd like to apologize for my lengthy absence, I've had to juggle several IRL things continuously for the last 6 months, and I haven't had the energy to make any videos. Hopefully I'll be able to return to a more semi-regular uploading schedule sooner rather than later. And don't forget to show the algorithm some love by leaving a like and comment below, and stay tuned for more Chinese etymology videos. You're all truly wonderful. Until next time, scholars.